Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, pleasure to be here. I, I love Salt Lake City. When I get to the bio slide, I already know about High West, so if you have something else for me, I would really appreciate that. So the obligatory, why the hell should you listen to me? Uh, I have been a developer my entire career. I love being an application developer. And by the way, there's going to be some humor in here. I'm going to poke fun at us. That's OK. How many people in the audience uh, are developers? Operations. Security, quality. See, this is the one that people always forget. No one asks for quality, so thank you. Thank you for being here. My la the last half of my career I've spent doing application security. I have a huge passion for it. Part of it's because I'm aggravated at all the breaches that occur, and we'll talk about that. I've done a lot of things. I've had the pleasure of speaking around the world on topics. Uh, I've done transformations from Waterfall to Agile to DevOps built those teams in, in those technologies. What we're going to talk about today is why AppSec. In case you didn't know, AppSec is application security. Why is it important? Why should we do it? Why should we care? Why is it that DevOps provides us a specific opportunity to get this right when we've been getting it wrong forever? So take a look at these stats. We do a bad job of building secure software. And it's not because we don't care, it's because we don't know. Of, of the people in the audience, uh, how many people have a, like a CS degree, a formal software development degree? And of those, keep your hands up for a second, of those, how many of you had secure coding as part of your curriculum? Ooh, we got a couple here. It's very rare, I love to see it. I am trying to work very, very hard with getting universities to start providing curriculum for this. I don't know why it's not there, but it's one of my goals. The point is that we have done an amazing job as a security industry, so this is InfoSec, information security, of building walls and moats and defenses against people coming in. So this is the steel door on my house. What we've done a poor job of is closing the windows. So when the attackers come, they say, well, steel door. Oh, what am I going to do? Look, there's an open window. And they crawl in there. They are going to find the weak spot. They're lazy, just like developers are lazy. Why, why would I work that hard when you provide me this avenue? And by the way, applications are the thing that take the sensitive data that we collect, whether it's PII, PCI, PHI, all of those things. We collect it to use it for our customers and the application is the thing that transports it in and outside of that perimeter. So it's the perfect place to attack. It has everything that I need. So again, back to the, the breaches. Of course, we have Target over there on your left and Equifax over here on your right. The thing that drives me crazy, and I am a vendor, but I will tell you that I would rather have had Equifax protect themselves with anybody's product than to have what happened happen. Okay, now this is a problem for developers, and I have a whole open source talk about what we do wrong as development. Uh, but this is something that I, I just, the reason I come out and talk is because I want people to take application security seriously. Whether it's us or with a competitor, if you do it, I am thrilled. All right, so how many people have an application security program? Excellent. One, two, ooh, yee. Yeah. Okay. All right, I, 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 we'll, we'll do a show of hands of who wants to have one later, but so for most of you, this is your application security program. <laughs> now, even at the best companies in the world, part of their portfolio looks like this. They only protect the things that they consider to be critical assets, and the rest of it, I don't know. I don't know what's in there. How many people have this? Got a gate. Great. Or, more traditionally, we think of them like this. Right? The black knight standing on the bridge. Nope, can't cross. <clears throat> now, when you have an application security program, it's usually not effective. And there are a couple of reasons why. I want to go into that in my strategy session. But the, the result of those gates is either this, where, yeah, there's a gate, but there's nothing keeping me from stopping at the gate and actually paying the toll. 
I don't have to do anything, I'll drive around it, or I will call my boss, who will call their boss, who will call their boss, and then someone with a bigger title is gonna say, we ship anyways, I own the P&L, or whatever the reason is, we'll accept the risk. And now equally bad, though funny, is this outcome, where, yeah, the gate's real, <laughs> ramming speed, didn't quite make it. This is also not good. It's funny, but not good. And I give this kind of a talk to both security people and development people. And what I try to teach both sides is that we need to work together on this problem. We can't crash into the gate. That's not good for the company. So if we think about why DevOps? So here is our traditional waterfall. And DevOps, the thing that's missing in this piece picture is feedback. So when the person that writes the requirements gives them to development, they do that first handoff through that wall of confusion, we lose some fidelity. It's playing telephone. By the time it gets to the poor operations people, they don't know who we built it for, they don't know why we built it, they don't know what it's even supposed to do, so they have to guess. The same thing with developers. Developers, we get the requirements, and then we have to adjust along the way. You get part way into an implementation and say, ah, yeah, can't go that way. Let's, let's change the problem a little bit. Let's change our implementation. We make trade-offs to either hit schedule or to properly hit the functionality or what have you. There are always trade-offs, and those don't get passed down well either. So what the operations person sees is a dumpster fire every time. And when they try to give us feedback, we don't get it. This is the critical problem with these methodologies. We're not talking to each other. It's your problem. When I, in, and I've done, who's done uh, Waterfall? In Waterfall, for those of you who haven't, I, I'm pencils down when I'm done coding. It's finished, see ya. I'm off on vacation, and then it's quality's problem and then we'll throw it back and forth over the wall until we, you know, we, until we get it right. So we went through the Agile revolution. This was amazing. We knocked down the first couple walls. We said, hey, why don't you guys sit in the room? Now, and this is critical in our learning for DevOps, when we started building our stories and started to track our velocity, we couldn't actually take credit for a story that was done for a developer. It had to function. We had to write tests. Now, TDD had been around for a very long time, but we didn't take it seriously until here. When you started doing Agile, like, oh, it has to work? Uh, okay. I want to take credit. I want my stories to be done. I want stories in, stories out. This is a great thing. This is when we started to take that part of the business seriously, and this is the lesson that we need to learn again with security. Now, we still have problems, right? We still have this feedback problem passing it down the line. Now there's more fidelity, but not great, but the people in the room are, are doing a good job of talking to each other, but we're not getting that feedback back upstream. Here, all of the concerns are in the room, and we're gonna talk about what I think a DevOps team means, but all of those concerns are in the room, and they can talk to their various components. Hey, you know the last time we built a feature like this, or we implemented it like that, Here's what happened when we put it in front of real customers. Here's what happened when it got exposed to real data. So you can adjust before you actually start the work. So you have this full continuity of feedback on how the process is working. Okay, for anyone that cares to answer, the purpose, the goal of an application security program. Does anyone have one? Yes. Lower risk. Lower risk. Like that answer. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, remove, confusion. remove confusion. Okay. I like it. Yes, sir. Compliance. Compliance. Yes. Who else? Visibility. Visibility. Maybe uh, prevent a breach. All of these are good things but I believe that they are a byproduct of what your application security program really should be. Now, as far as I know, I'm the only one that talks like this, so I really want to take this message. I would like you guys to take it out for me. We all know this cost curve. It's cheaper to fix it when we find it early, right? 
But when do we test for security? So let's take this jet engine metaphor. I got a bunch of parts, and here's my workforce. We're going to take those parts, we're going to spend tens of thousands of hours putting the thing together. I'm going to put it into a test stand, and all the way up we go. And it blows up. Hmm, that sucks. Forensically, we look at it, we're like, oh, there was a fan blade that was cracked in that assembly. That's buried way down deep inside of that engine. If I could have found it before I shipped it, what would that mean? I'd have to disassemble half the engine to go find the part to pull it out, to put it back in, rebuild it. Does this sound familiar? Does this sound like what we do with software? Or, or a, a knitting analogy, so I, I, I knit for my daughters. Knitting the sweater to find out it drops a stitch, and then I have to unknit it and re-knit it. It's the only way to fix it. Boy, that sucks. I wish I could have found that when I did it. The point is that DevOps tells us that we should be looking for the earliest opportunity to find a problem. And yet, we do security testing at the end. And you're all a bunch of smart people. I'm sure that resonates with you. So here's our agile process. Could be our DevOps process, because DevOps is often run on top of Scrum. Here's our security guy. Rubbing on the window. They don't understand the process. They don't know what you're doing. They weren't invited in the room, by the way. So they're hoping that you did it right, and they're waiting to get the tests. They're waiting to get your finished product so that way they can say, okay, let's check this out. Then they, they run some tests on it, and they say, ooh, 100 problems. Ugh. I'm never going to get them to do 100 things. I'm going to go to them and say, hey, guys, i got 40 things for you to fix. 40? I'm shipping tomorrow. How can, I, you can't do this to me. This is crazy. Can we just do the important ones? The security guys go, well, I had 100. I chopped it down to 40. They get five. If they're lucky, they're fighting you for budget on something that should be a first party concern of yours. For the company. All right, I'm going to walk you through two scenarios as the end of my thought process on the point of your application security program. Here's a developer. Now, I like every developer. They make mistakes at some frequency. Everybody does it. I did it. I do it. Now, the cost of that, let's take security, for instance. Well, I guess in this case, it doesn't really matter. For, for this, we need to find it. OK, so I have some testing that's going to find it, whether that be people or, or technology. I need to track it. Now, this is the critical one, right? Because now it's a room of people. Now it's my triage meeting. I have some very highly paid people sitting in a room trying to figure out who's going to do the work. And when they put that work to somebody, who are they giving it to? The person that wrote it? Well, that would be ideal. If not, then it's somebody else, and that's going to cost me more. Now they need to actually uh, retest it afterwards. Did they really fix the problem? Now, for a lot of security things, who's heard of the OWASP top 10? Excellent, excellent. This is the Open Web Application Security Project. This talks about web applications and the kind of things that you should be afraid of when shipping these applications from a security perspective. A lot of those things are simply choices. When I went to college and I had to write a database query, I strung together a bunch of strings and then I fed it to the engine. And it worked. Great. When I start taking user input, that's where we get SQL injection. Now, we don't do it because we're malicious. We do it because we are untrained, and this is part of the premise here. If I could train you to say, prepared statements, parameterized queries, if you do it that way, you do not have this problem. It's just a choice. When I sit down, it could come out of here secure. And a lot of the things in the OWASP top 10 are like that. A lot of security things are like that. I could use secure, or I could use secure random. I, I could have easily done that if I knew. So what if I could train you, we'll take SQL injection as the case, to develop without writing SQL injection? Guess what? I don't have to pay that cost anymore. I'm not finding, fixing, triaging, all of those things that we talked about go away. So I will posit to you that 
the true purpose of an application security program is to train the developers not to do it in the first place. Help them. Help us. Go to your security people say, we need training. I don't want to find it at the end. I don't want to find it before check-in. I don't want to find it in production. All right, did I convince anyone? Anyone convinced? Because this actually bends the cost curve to zero. It's not low cost, it's no cost. So when people talk about shift left, what they're talking about is, in most cases, a tool in my IDE that will find my security problems. Well, how about you just teach me how not to do it? Because if I don't do it, now it doesn't cost me anything. It doesn't get in my way. So as an engineering leader, if I could get my team to do that, I get more velocity out of them and less problems. Everybody's happy. OK, DevOps team. I get the opportunity to speak to a lot of companies. And typically, this is what they think of as a DevOps team. So I want to I set the record straight at least on what I think about it. And you can think what you'd like. <clears throat> it's glorified release engineers, people that write our automation, but without the feedback, without knowing that I did something wrong. So go back to that picture of DevOps where I get something from operations saying it broke in production. How am I going to do it better? If I get woken up at 2 in the morning because I wrote lousy code or my cube mate did, we're going to have a discussion tomorrow. Hey, you know what? Here's what I learned last night at 2 in the morning when I almost woke you up. We need the feedback. Do not fight against this part of it. This is the best part. This is what makes you better. Now, security, again, this is typically where we find them. We know we need to have that concern throughout that life cycle. While we're planning, what are the threats I should be worried about? Because I'll tell you that if you do this right, you reduce your company's risk by an extraordinary amount. And I don't mean because you're a target, because I will tell you personally as a security expert that if you're a target, you're going to get popped. If Russia or China or North Korea want to get into your company, they will. There's no way, two ways about it. But do I become a target of opportunity because of my practices? Do I leave unpatched open source on my perimeter, which, by the way, they find with our own IoT, they take our compute and they go spray the internet looking for problems. They say, ooh, Equifax, that's cool. Let's go check them out. You become a target opportunity if you get lazy about this. How am I doing for time? I, I really science this deck. I changed it just before I got up here, too. All right, so here's my strategy. This is based on, so I've got to thank John for setting me up here, the three ways of DevOps. If you haven't read the Phoenix Project, you really should. I love the audio series. It gets in really deep, like up to your elbows deep in where DevOps came from. So this is my attempt to include security in the three ways of DevOps. This is the three ways of DevSecOps. So the first way is systems thinking. Now, if you've listened to the audio series, they now call this flow. What is the relationship? What are the stages that I need to pass through? What are the things in my value chain that need to get done for me to be complete? And it starts with relationships. How many people know the name of the person in their security organization that may be their peer? OK, some, excellent. Excellent, that's good. This makes it harder for us to do us versus them. Now, the other thing we realize in those conversations is that oftentimes, we're not pulling in the same direction. Now, there was a, a VP of mine at my first startup. When we got into these really heated debates over implementation or whatever, he's like, all right, everybody stop, pull out a business card, look at the top left corner. Hey, guess what? We're on the same team. Enemies out there, not in here. So this has to change. We can't be pulling against each other. We need to make sure, no one laughed, so that's bad. That's a bad sign. This is, good. This is gonna go downhill, thank you. <laughs> um, th this is something that we need to fix in our companies to make sure we have goal alignment. Think about DevOps. It, in the case where we were doing Agile, one of the problems was developers were change all things. Operations were make it run glassy smooth. Well, if you drop a pebble in a pond, you will disturb the surface. Any change is bad. So if their goal is to, to stop change, essentially, well, what does that mean for your goal? You're pulling like this. We need to align those things so that failure is OK. We'll recover from it quickly. 
but you need to align those goals. Out of that, we're going to, this, this is a new way of thinking about this, have mutual accountability. Now, we've done this with quality already, so this isn't a stretch of the imagination. There's a, a couple of quotes. So I was at a, a B-Sides conference, this is a security conference, where a leader from OWASP stood up and said, we're going to hold the developers accountable. Did that feel good to anybody in the room? It's like, whoa. Super aggressive. It's like, what? I, I don't understand his thinking. And I was able to speak after him. So when I got up, I'm like, ah, boy, that, that sucked. I, I mean, how do you expect your dev teams to respond? I'm going to hold you accountable. Uh, there was another one where I, I was talking with a CISO, and he said, I am going to enforce security in the CICD pipeline. I stopped him. I said, well, that's interesting. You could do that, but what if you got them to embrace the thought that security was important and that those requirements were important to them? If I broke it, I'll fix it. If it's insecure, I will make it secure. This is what we need to do. This is our part of this. It's to say, we are accountable. It's not security's problem, it's everybody's problem. All right, so next one is feedback. Feedback loops. Again, feedback is a gift. If I find out that I'm doing, and I would love feedback on this presentation, by the way, because a lot of new slides in here. Uh, I, I took a course where they, t they call, uh, you know, someone that walks up to you and gives you feedback, uh, unsolicited aid and advice. You don't like it. It doesn't feel good. So if you're going to give feedback, you need to have that ethos. You need to have that culture. You need to say, can I offer you some feedback on that presentation you gave? If I say yes, it's like, well, that really sucked. No. One of the things in my company's culture is that we always have to presume positive intent. I didn't mean to hurt you when I said that. Maybe I said it wrong. Maybe I suck at saying things. Let's talk through it. Presume that the person that you're working with didn't come in to screw up your day. Right? That's not what we do. We want to make each other better, and we can only do that if we give feedback. We have this perspective on the world, and yet we need to see this. So back to you know, John's thought about diversity. You need to have that diverse perspective. You don't have all the answers. Nobody does. So embrace it. Now here's the key. Measurement. If I go to the doctor once a year, and they take my blood pressure, and they say, you have high blood pressure, what do I know about my blood pressure? It's, it's high that day. What do you really know? Maybe I, you know, I always fight with my spouse or I'm nervous in a doctor's office or something. So what if I started measuring it monthly or weekly or daily? How much do I know about my blood pressure now? Now I can see that maybe changes in diet or exercise or whatever are affecting my blood pressure up and down. Getting better, getting worse. You cannot do that unless you have measurement. So start measuring things. Baseline your company on security. Understand the things that you struggle with because this is what we're going to use later. Training and awareness. We are untrained in, in application security. But we are very clever. Who thinks they're clever? I do. Yes. You guys should all raise your hands. I mean, who's going to give you a raise if you don't think you're clever? Who thinks they're clever? Come on now. That's right. All right. Good. They need to train us. Now, I could tell you some stats about getting better with training, getting faster with training. By the way, because we have measurement, guess what I'm going to use to figure out what to train you on? Am I just going to say, hey, here's a secure Java coding course? I have measurement. I know what I'm doing wrong. How about I take the one that I'm really struggling with, just one, Fill this room with pizza, open up the doors because all developers love free pizza. We all come in, talk to you for one hour about that one thing. And now I can measure whether it was effective. Lots of times I get into these conversations, hey, we have, you know, secure code training. Really? Does it work? I don't know. <laughs> Why the hell are you doing it? If you're not moving the needle, you should know what needle you're trying to move and how much you want to move it. And then measure the effectiveness because maybe your training sucks. Maybe you're not getting better because you're not training in the right way. The next thing is we have to help security understand how the sausage is made. We have to teach them this, the terminology, the words. I, when I talk in front of InfoSec, I said, try this. Go up to a scrum master and say, 
hey, I would love to be uh, a chicken in your next, next retrospective. Boy, if I ever heard that from a security person, my head would fall off. That's what we're talking about. Them getting so deep into that process to understand the things that you struggle with, because you have struggles too, and they need to understand that. We need to shift left. That means it needs to be part of our definition of done. If I haven't scanned my code for security vulnerabilities, I shouldn't be done yet, because I'm just going to have to do the work later. We kid ourselves into thinking that we'll just like slide by, we'll worry about it later, but we know that cost curve. We ignore those two facts. Because we're nervous about it, because we don't understand it, we don't know what to do with those results. Which leads me to the next point, is you have to help them fix what they find. You have to ask for help. They have to be a partner. Right? This, this is, they don't come in with a stick anymore. They come in, hey, I see you guys are struggling with SQL injection. I'd like to give you guys some training over lunch. Would you be open to that? Helping each other work through these problems and getting better as a company. Okay, third way, experimentation. I love this. Uh, anyone knows Despair Inc.? Love these guys. Uh, so th this, I, ke I keep this poster in my office. Don't be afraid to change things. Look around. Yes, we've always done it that way. So what? Right? When you take a look at that from the outside, you're like, whoa, what are those idiots doing? If you're in that culture, though, you're like, this is it. This is everything. We love to do this every year. <laughs> Don't be afraid to fail. Mistakes are good. They are learning opportunities. Again, John used the ending court example. I went from 1,000 to 800. 200 less opportunities to learn. That sucks. Don't be afraid to be an example to others. On your own team, to other companies. You know what? The best presentations on DevOps in the uh, DevOps Enterprise Summit are the ones that come in and say, here's how it sucked. Here's how I failed. Here's how I ran off the edge of the cliff. Everyone learns from that. I think it was in the, uh, that panel that... Uh, that uh, John alluded to where they said uh, um, good decisions come from uh, experience, experience comes from bad decisions. Right? You learn more from failure. All right, so the way we do this in security, one of the primary ways is there's usually about this many security people, right? And probably thousands of developers, dozens or hundreds of teams, thousands of applications. They can't be in every meeting. Could we find someone that is in all of the meetings talking about applications. Hey, how about we use developers or quality or whoever is on that team? So we use them, we uptrain them, take them into a room, we give them a couple days worth of training to understand how they can be better. What are the things that I'm looking for? What's the checklist to start with of things in my grooming sessions that I should be worried about if I see a new service endpoint or a new architecture or a new input mode? Teach them that so they can bring that to the team. And by the way, when they get over their skis, we go back to security. Say, I don't understand this. We think we have a problem, but I'm not sure. Can you come and talk to us? We need to be that force multiplier. This makes us better developers, because if you can put secure code on there, you are much more valuable in the outside world. So at your present company and at your future company. So think about starting a program like that where and this, there are some keys to this, and you can go find a YouTube talk that I have on, on security champions, but finding people that are influential in the team. Now, uh, people that are newer to the company or newer into their careers maybe don't have that, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't get trained, just maybe they shouldn't be the security champion, because I want someone that when they open their mouth to say, this is broken, we need to fix it, everyone's like, yeah, you're right, you're right. So this part is something where we can take part in. So think about going to your security people, saying, we would like to be better. Can you help us? Change the culture. Build those relationships. Have mutual accountability. Experiment. It's OK to fail. DevOps is all about failure. Failure is good. It provides you that opportunity to learn. Laugh about it. Joke about it. Take it to a conference. Because those are the places where you can impact a larger number of people. You go from additive to multiplicative. 
because hopefully me standing in front of you talking in a semi-humorous way about application security helps you get it, helps you understand it's not that bad, it's not that hard. We can be trained. Thank you very much for your time.